for inviting me here this morning uh, to just show an extraordinary uh, devotion to the memory of Mary Lincoln. I come here from Philadelphia. This is the fourth time that I've come to Springfield to study and to res respect and pay respect to the memory of Mary Lincoln. Uh, in Philadelphia since 2000, I have performed as the good wife, Mrs. Benjamin Franklin. And in that journey of becoming Mrs. Franklin, I studied a great deal about our founding mothers and the contributions of women through the history of our nation. I examined the life of one of our founding fathers, one of certainly the most fascinating, uh, through the eyes of his wife and life partner. In 2008, it became uh, apparent to me that it was necessary to add to my repertoire uh, of shows, and I began to write uh, in anticipation of the 200th anniversary of the birth of President Lincoln. I knew that there would be a call, especially when I did some research and found out that there were no other women in Philadelphia performing a one-woman show as Mary Lincoln and so that I knew that it would be an exciting year, and it truly has been. I started by coming to Springfield to study, and I was embraced and impressed by this uh, academic community here that were so generous in sharing the information about this unbelievably fascinating woman. I was embraced by the women of the Mary Lincoln's Coterie who have devoted their lives, truly devoted their lives, to the study of Mary Lincoln and to the performance, the truthful and honest performance uh, and sharing with the audience. When I began the journey as Mary Lincoln, I probably asked myself the same question that many of the women in the audience today ask themselves. Of all the women I could choose, why did I choose Mary Lincoln? In studying Mrs. Benjamin Franklin, there is very little information. Uh, and so when I began to study Mrs. Lincoln, I was amazed at the unbelievable amount of information that is out there, the letters, the first person accounts, and certainly the opinions of many, many, many people. Uh, as I um, sifted and studied and eventually digested, and I still continue to digest this information. I know that for many years to come, that will be my responsibility in an ever-changing presentation of, of Mary. I think that eventually, after asking ourselves, why did we choose Mary, we finally come to the realization that Mary chose us, that she needs different women to portray all of these different facets of her personality, of her being, that each and every one of us brings something to the table that is very different in our own personal experiences. For some of us, it's very hard to understand how Mrs. Lincoln endured the separations from her husband, how she endured being a mother and father to her children. But I grew up as a military child, and I understand that families are not only viable and loving, but continue to survive through duty uh, of one parent to this nation. And so it isn't surprising to me. And yet I come to my sisters here who have sisters, I do not have sisters, and they teach me about the relationship between Mary and her sisters. It helps me to understand by networking and by getting to know all of these other presenters and performers. And every time I see someone like Max Daniels, I fall a little bit more in love with Abraham Lincoln. It's easy to do. I bet. <laughs> what have we discovered? Well, Valerie eloquently uh, brought these things to light. We discover the innocence and the unconditional love that Mary had for her parents. We, we understand how much she wanted to be accepted by her siblings and the love that she gave, in particular, her sister Emily at a very difficult time in her life.
Her gentleness, her kindness as a friend. Many of us know the story of Mary taking a child that could not be nursed by its own mother and nursing that child herself. Her passion as a wife. That is a critical part of her being and what motivated her in so many decisions in her life. Her absolute, utter devotion as a mother and the dignity with which she tried so hard to approach her role as the First Lady of this nation. Yes, indeed, our duty as performers centers to examine this and to bring this truth to you, our audience. I've studied the history of this nation for more than 25 years. And in that journey, I have been overwhelmed by the contributions of the men who came to this country and began to contribute to its history. So much so that it made me question, where is my place in this history? Who are these founding mothers? Who are these women who gave birth to an entire nation over the last 234 years? And that journey has taken me not only to one of those first women, Mrs. Benjamin Franklin, but to one of the women who continue to carry that torch through our history. It is a journey of discovery for all of us. When I am ultimately called to heaven, if that should be <laughs> the end result, I hope that I am greeted by my parents and siblings who have gone before me. And I also hope, I think, like these women here today who perform as Mary Lincoln and study her, I hope that there is a moment when I meet Mrs. Lincoln and she says to me what I hope she will say to each and every one of these women. You have treated me with kindness. You have treated me with dignity. You have treated me with love. And you have treated me with truth. Thank you very much for having me here today. Make me cry, Joanne. <laughs> We'd like to take a few moments to uh, make some acknowledgments.